now for CBS 6 Rewind. And tonight it's the story of a local business that managed to produce, among other things, the best-selling doll in American history. That's right. But that local success story actually took a bad turn and left in its wake empty shells of buildings, thousands of unemployed workers, and fading dreams of what might have been. A paint chip sign on the side of a sad looking concrete wall. All that's left of one of the most successful toy businesses in the world. But before flaming out, Coleco's four capital region factories worked at a furious pace under intense company pressure to meet customers' demands. They would call you on the intercom system every hour and want to know your production for that hour. Gary Locatelli, former production supervisor. You had to put out 150 of those per hour. For a brief moment in time, this small company in the Mohawk Valley was on top of the world, employing thousands to work in a maze of interconnected buildings. But today, a drive through the Coleco complex is a trip through a ghost town. How did their story go so wrong? You have to rewind back to the early 60s to understand how the Connecticut Leather Company hit the big time. It started with a new name, Coleco. The company diversified and began making above-ground pools and eventually toys like Smurfs, Rambo dolls, and Big Wheels bikes. But it was a huggable little doll with painted eyes and big dimples introduced at the New York Toy Show in 1983 that skyrocketed Coleco to the top of the toy world. Within a year, the demand for the Cabbage Patch Kid doll would become so great that parents threw punches in store aisles to secure one. These really aren't dolls at all. They're kids who are adopted. And when video games became a national obsession, Coleco was right there. <laughs> securing the exclusive rights to manufacture Donkey Kong. The output locally was blistering. One thing I have left from my Coleco days is a stopwatch. They only had maybe two seconds to put in the two screws. And if somebody was taking four seconds, then I either had to tell them to speed it up or I had to replace them with another person. And the pace never slowed. The company even created its own console, the $189 Coleco Vision. It's uh, probably be the number one toy of the year. The Amsterdam factory turned out more than a million in 1982 and averaged 9,600 ColecoVision games a day. It was just floor to floor of uh, electronics, people assembling the games, and it was just a madhouse. Meanwhile, that little doll with its own birth certificate sold 20 million in 1984. But bad company decisions and changing tastes were the beginning of the end. The Powerpuff Girls, you know, which is based on Japanese anime. Um, of course, the, the Beanie Babies became very popular, too, and kind of pushed the market for Cabbage Patch Kid dolls out of the way. Computers muscled their way into the American consciousness, and Coleco rushed in while refusing to outsource. We can do it uh, cheaper in Amsterdam, New York. The company became a victim of its own ambition. In 1983, Coleco introduced the $600 Atom computer before an actual working model ever materialized. By the end of the year, we will produce between 125,000 and 140,000 units of Atom. Advanced sales were delayed for months on end, and those who did get one most often found it defective. That led to the shutdown of the second and third ships in Amsterdam. And by 1985, Coleco dropped its own Atom bomb. It was done making the Atom computer. For four of the next five years, Coleco would bleed money and begin outsourcing local jobs overseas. The Amsterdam and Mayfield plants were closed. They just came up to us and told us that we were going to be laid off. They just gave me my check, gave me a little thing and said goodbye. Hopes remained high, though, that this critical business would not die. They are going to come back. They're not dead. But in the end, there was no coming back for Coleco. What was the economic driver in the Mohawk Valley sputtered to a stop. By 1989, the swimming pool business had been sold to a company in Canada, and Hasbro bought the toy business.